So, thank you very much to the organisers, and uh, particularly thank you to all the French and Belgian participants for being here. I guess it was really passionate about my net protocol, and that's exactly what we want to hear at this conference. So, um, I'd like to do some, some work on, uh, so monopole, the, the statistical mechanics and thermodynamics of this uh, simplified monopole model of spin ice materials. So this is work uh, done in collaboration with uh, Valentin Rabin, a student from ENS Lyon, who uh, is right now writing up uh, the last bits of his thesis. He's probably watching the football, but that's what he should be doing. Um, Sissi Suen, who was a summer student from a past year university, and Ludovic Berthier, who's an expert on non equilibrium physical mechanics at uh, uh, Montpellier University. But this work is certainly not uh, standalone, and it's based on previous work that I've done with Ludovic Joba, uh, Robert uh, uh, Ludovic Mosdes in Rabo, and um, uh, Roger Kaiser. Okay, so monopole phase transitions in spin ice. Actually, experimentally, for the moment at least, I think there's only one. Uh, this uh, spin ice, this phase transition to spin ice in a 1 1 1 field, this is by Sakakibara and collaborators some years ago, has been successfully described, I believe, in terms of a monopole liquid gas phase transition by Castanol, Romos, and Sonny, and I'll come back to this and try and put it in the context of this general phase diagram at the end of my talk. Okay, so spin ice uh, materials and models need uh, little explanation uh, these days. So, um, only the disposing titanate show no uh, thermal phase transition at zero at zero external field, and uh, the, the the low energy band of states incorporate the, the powering this uh, uh, powering entropy, and uh, spin ice models. Spin ice can be modeled to an, to an extremely high level of, uh, of approximation by this dipolar spin ice model and its uh, subsequent development by Michel Genra and his uh, collaborators. This model does have a low temperature ordering phase transition that's not seen in, in experiments. And uh, the secret of this model is the self-screening of the long-range dipole interactions in these two inch route uh, configuration. But what I really like and what I've been really working on is uh, an extension of the dipolar spin ice model where you take the point dipoles and you extend them in needles or dumbbells at the centers of the needles. The needles touch at the centers of the tetrahedra. And uh, so then uh, the, the center of the tetrahedra has an ensemble of magnetic charge that for two in two out subs to zero, for three in one out gives you a single monopole, and all in all out gives you a double monopole. And within this uh, uh, dumbbell approximation, so the dipolar spin ice uh, Hamiltonian can be reduced to a Coulomb interaction between the charged vertices, and so it, and uh, and uh, the Coulomb interaction between the charge vertices and a chemical potential uh, that allows the creation and destruction of pairs of single and double monopoles. So in everything else that I'm going to talk about in my talk, I'm going to use this physical chemistry language and I'm going to simulate uh, the dumbbell model using the uh, Coulomb interaction, but you shouldn't remember that the underlying spin physics is still there because when I update my simulation, it's a spin that flips. And so the spin flipping moves, creates, or destroys these monopole quasi-particles. And there's another important point that I'll come back to is that this chemical potential, it can be calculated for each material. And uh, the chemical potential for single and double monopoles it scales like the square of the charge on that monopole. Uh, um, so for double monopoles, it's four times single monopoles. 
And of course, the Coulomb interaction between two charges at the same scale also scales like the square of the charge. And that's a very important point. OK, so um, if, you, if you believe in monopoles, then you can start doing interesting statistical mechanics. Here's a result that I've shown before, taken directly from Ashcroft, Ashcroft and Merman at first courses in, in uh, solid state physics. If you want to calculate the crossover between spin ice and all in all out, you can take all in all out phase as a crystal, of, uh, like a zinc blend, blend crystal of, of, of uh, ionic uh, uh, magnetic ions. Um, so you can calculate the energy, the ionic energy of this crystal structure. Here's the ionic energy. This is the maximum constant for a diamond. That is, this is the uh, uh, Coulomb interaction for pairs of nearest neighbor charges. And this is the energy scale for creating those double monopoles. If this is bigger than this, you get a vacuum. If this is bigger than this, you get a crystal at zero temperature. And you get this prediction, and this is in very good agreement with simulations of the dipole has been isomorphic. But there's a further preparatory point, is that if you do the same argument, argument for a, a crystal of single charge monopoles, you get exactly the same threshold, because now this energy is a factor of four smaller, and this energy is a factor of four smaller, but the crossover is on exactly the same uh, uh, scale. So this means at the point where a double monopole crystal and a single monopole crystal are uh, thermodynamically degenerate, and it would be here uh, at, low t uh, at low temperature, neglecting, of course, the low energy ordering of the dipole of spin ice model. So here is the full phase diagram that you'd expect to spin ice from the dipole of spin ice model. So here is, uh, is homium and dysprosium titanate and some fictitious XTO that would cross this boundary to the all, all in all out phase. Moving along here corresponds to moving the values of the chemical potential. And here, then the double and single monopole uh, crystal phases are, are, are degenerate. And here's a, a nice figure from a paper by Bozzi and collaborators that have another very important point for this talk is that if you look at the dipole of spin ice phase diagram between uh, spin ice and all in all out, there's a, there's a, a multi critical point. There's a line of first order phase transitions and a second order, line of second order phase transition. Whereas in the nearest neighbor spin ice, there's only second order. Okay, so this line of first order phase transitions, this is very important because it guarantees you that out there there'll be other monopole phase transitions waiting to be discovered. So I'm going to take a, uh, a small um, side step and remind you why that is. Okay, so if you have a first order phase transition, uh, there's a spontaneous symmetry breaking of this first order phase transition, but now I can apply a field conjugate to this, uh, to this uh, uh, order parameter, and as I apply the field, the first order transition continues and it closes up and it, cl and it ends at this critical and critical end point. Now the field breaks the symmetry above and below this line, but there's still a phase transition. So this is a symmetry sustaining phase transition, just as in a liquid gas phase transition. So whenever there's a first order phase transition, if you can, uh, if you can apply experimentally or numerically uh, 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 a field that conjugates the order parameter, you'll have a further line of phase transitions. OK, so one further point, if you, are, uh, if you want to make a further pedantic point, which I think is important for spin ice, so here's the liquid gas phase transition. Here's water and water vapor. And it's symmetry sustaining because the symmetry of the gas and the liquid phase are the same. But actually, there's another uh, detailed point compared to this first example, and that is the sustained symmetry is the highest possible translational symmetry of the system. Okay, so what we see for uh, spin ice, the first point is true, the second point is not actually true. I'll come back to this point. Okay, so given that, that preparation, what I believe that the full phase diagram of uh, uh, the monopole model of the spin ice, it should look like this. So here we have temperature and chemical potential. 
and uh, some chemical potential is like J over D uh, in the, in the uh, Melka Melka algebra representation, and here it's chemical potential for double and single monopoles, and this is the point where those two phases are uh, um, are degenerate. Here, this part is the all-in-all-out phase where, where double monopole phase wins. But uh, this is a staggered chemical potential that I can apply. So this crystallization, monopole crystallization, it can be described by this order parameter. Okay, so eta is plus or minus one on A sites or B sites of the diamond lattice. It's a bipartite bipart lattice. And so this is plus or minus one for A sites or B sites. And QI is the charge on site I. It can be either zero, plus or minus one, or plus or minus two. And so actually this looks like uh, the S equals two bloom capel model. And you can find details of this model in this paper by Pena Lara. And, uh, and this phase diagram is essentially the same phase diagram as that model. And uh, so here, uh, Delta has slipped in another important detail. This staggered chemical potential, it scales linearly with the scale of the magnetic charge, the, of the, of the monopolar charge. So because it scales linearly as you move away, you open up uh, these double wings, giving three possible phase diagram, uh, uh, phasing. So the monopole fluid, spin ice, fragmented single charge monopole crystal two, and all in a loud double monopole phase. And the only uh, dotted lines here are this line of uh, approaching this, this critical point. This is potentially an extremely interesting pentacritical point. Um, and there's a, a very interesting problem um, uh, to, uh, to negotiate with. And I should also say these lines, so these, these are first order, uh, these are planes of first order phase transitions. And the continuous lines are lines of critical end points. So these are lines of symmetry sustaining phase transitions. And uh, I just thought I'd throw this up. It's absolutely nothing to do with frustrating magnetism. But I was setting a talk at the College of Electrons the conference in, uh, in, the, in Prague last summer. And this diagram came up. This is for this itinerant uh, ferromagnetic material when you apply uh, pressure. And, and field, so it's essentially the same. There's a ferromagnetic, this is a ferromagnetic phase, and there's a double wing structure, and there's a ferromagnetic wall, there's ferromagnetic two. It's essentially the same phase diagram, and it shows the effects of pressure that you can have on solid state materials. I guess this material material will be much more responsive to pressure than, than, than isolated, frustrating magnetic material. And the experts on that. Okay, so, so what you can do is, if you take a plane of this three-dimensional phase diagram, so, and then you turn it on, on its side, so you have, uh, so you have the delta and t, okay, so uh, uh, this plane cuts these two lines in two places, and there are two critical endpoints here and here, and if you make a simulation of the dumbbell model from uh, a fixed temperature from low delta, the high delta, this is cis simulations, then you get two first order jumps, exactly as predicted, and you can, using the Ashcroft and Bergen argument, you can predict accurately the positions of these two points. When you get close to the critical endpoint, you get a double hump distribution with this order parameter about, about, about uh, 5 plus 1, or 5 plus 2. And, uh, uh, as providence would have it, these were theoretical ideas that were, that were developed independently of experiment, experiment. But I think there's a beautiful, there are beautiful experimental systems out there that come pretty close to this kind of physics. So homium iridate has a, a double uh, pyrocross structure with the iridium ions forming a conjugate uh, pyrocross structure with an all-in-all-out with an all-in-all-out structure. And the all-in-all-out structure provides you exactly this staggered chemical potential within the monopole picture. Uh, it's a powder sample. There's no phase transition. But as, the, as, you, as you reduce the temperature, the magnetic moment in the all-in-all-out phase uh, increases and it saturates exactly half the total moment. And uh, this is absolutely consistent with lying in this part of the ring. 
Okay, so what I think happens is that uh, these are fairly vertical slices, so nature has given us material that when you reduce the temperature, you land uh, between these two plates. Um, now, if you can apply chemical or physical pressure uh, uh, down here, then you might be able to force the material across one of these, uh, one or both of these phase diagrams, depending on which way you go on applying the pressure. And again, we're experts in the room on how far you can go in uh, these kinds of materials. Um, okay. okay, so then what you can do once you've insulated these materials, then you can do statistical physics, you can investigate the properties of one of these critical endpoints. So we chose the critical endpoint for the for mu equal to minus 4.3 Kelvin, the value for uh, DTO. So here's the phase diagram, and you can calculate so in the cumulant, and uh, you can find the position of this critical endpoint, you get the distribution of all the parameters around this or near, very close to this critical endpoint. And uh, you can do uh, dynamical experiments close to this critical endpoint. So, uh, so called people do it uh, uh, steering, as done for the 111, for the phase of the critical endpoint of the 111 transition in this paper by Hamilton collaborators. So, I have to go pretty quickly. This is a dynamical correlation function, and as you approach this critical endpoint, then you get our uh, correlations developing. You can do sweeps of the order parameter, fixed time. Uh, Freak sweeps of delta fixed time, and this gives you out of equilibrium physics due to critical slowing down, and this collapses rather beautifully with icy uh, critical exponents. And if you could find one of these planes experimentally, then in a pressure experiment, you could uh, you could do this kind of dynamical uh, uh, these dynamical experiments. And as we already saw in the last talk, as the microscopic time scale of these materials is typically a millisecond. This would be an extremely interesting uh, proposition because this critical slowing down would end, uh, enter directly into the window of experiment uh, of experiments of what we can do. Okay, so I want to finally come back to spin ice in a one 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 field. So uh, uh, much has been written about this this uh, this uh, critical endpoint already, but uh, so my claim is that this critical endpoint here is is extremely similar, it's a close co uh, cousin of this critical endpoint that I've discovered by applying the staggered chemical potential. Um, I'm sure you all agree that the best way of thinking of spin ice is actually as an emergent U1 field that, that fragments on a lattice uh, by a Helmholtz field decomposition and so a pre one out monocle defect can be written as a divergence full part, giving you the defect giving the monopole and the divergence free part that fluctuates, fluctuates freely. Okay, so in the, in, in the, for the physics that I've told you, delta, the staggered chemical potential, couples just to this part of this field, whereas H, the applied field, couples to both the monopole part and the circulating part. But apart from that, it's essentially the same thing. This applied field gives you, provides you, with uh, this staggered chemical potential, and you can see that explicitly here. If you start off with a with, with a part with a bit on the uh, on the on the uh, low field plateau uh, on the uh, low temperature plateau of uh, Kagami ice, and you flip this spin or this spin, you create pairs of monopoles, and the difference in energy between this creation. And a zero field creation is just the energy gained when the monopole moves in the direction of the field. So a magnetic field corresponds to a chemical potential gradient. So you can calculate the, 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 the change in the chemical potential for a monopole going from here to here. So uh, this is the Q delta is equal to Q H scale of A, and this gives you uh, delta equal to Q. Q H over H A over three, and you put in the numbers. This is exactly the same two Kelvin uh, energy scale as in uh, our uh, critical endpoint here. 
the temperature is a little bit different because probably there's two kinds of fields. If you give it entropy, that means that the, 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 the transition survives uh, to a higher temperature. And uh, so field is a gradient, chemical potential gradient. You can see that if you start from here and you take this spin and you move the red molecule against the field, this calls, costs you a horribly large amount of energy. Uh, um, and uh, and uh, so uh, uh, you, you don't get those excitations. If you wanted to move the field, if you want to move the particle against the field uh, in this direction, uh, and then this is a blocked spin, so you'd have to actually move the monopole around some complicated path to get from here to here. And if you're in this monopole crystal phase, this is a high energy state, and so and so these constraints of the spins, the direct the direct strings, means that this chemical potential gradient actually turns into a staggered chemical potential agreed with agreed with uh, the staggered chemical potential that we apply in this case. Okay, so uh, um, so that's it. Um, I think there's a whole family of monocle phase transitions uh, out there waiting to be found, and if one could find them, or if one could uh, Take up a Hamek et al.'s uh, proposition for looking at uh, this, that this critical endpoint or our new critical endpoints as a whole host of interesting dynamical experiments. Thank you, Peter. Model, 
these lines they meet before you arrive here. Okay? So I think there's a there's a there's a, a hierarchy of meetings. Okay? But uh, this is something that we can I talk about difficult to believe that the, the entropy, the pounding entropy of this phase rules out that possibility. So we believe that that's a specific property of the, the dumbbell model. Okay? And so what happens here is, well, it's an interesting model. Uh, it's outside, outside of the scope of the model, but it's a very interesting model. Thank you. Um, there have been some experiments with the model, and I've